Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a comparison video between three HO scale F7s. From the left here we have a BLI Paragon 3 uh, F7. Note that this is their later run, not the blue line version. Uh, in the middle here we have an MTH F7 with Protoson 3.0. And in the front here we have an Atherton Genesis uh, F7. Now this is one of their later runs. Uh, they made many runs of these, but this is uh, one with the blue box, the dark blue box, not, not the uh, yellow box ones that you see popping, uh, you know, popping off really common in eBay. This is definitely one of their later runs. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Now to start off, um, I just want to quickly say I actually did make this video, a comparison video of F7s uh, when I was like 12. Um, so it is definitely a very old video. Uh, it's actually it's actually my most popular video on my channel, which is kind of sad. But anyways, um, hopefully this 2020 remake will uh, replace that one. And uh, unlike my other videos, uh, where I do review and comparison videos, which are basically just like I go through each engine individually, like you know, the front, the side, the back, the top, etc., uh, for each engine, you know, for each individual engine. This time, I'm just going to have all three at once, so you can easily see the differences between each engine, and hopefully that will not only be more inform informative, but also speed up the process. So that, with that being said, let's get started uh, with some history of the engines. The EMD F7 was a 1500 horsepower diesel electric locomotive produced between February 1949 and December 1953 by EMD and GM. In total, 2,393 A units and 1,463 B units were made, of which Santa Fe had 215 A units and 247 B units. Although originally promoted by EMD as a freight hauling unit, Santa Fe chose to assign much of their F7s for passenger duties. Santa Fe's war bonnet was made iconic to modelers by Lionel's original O-scale renditions back in the post-war era. Today, they are still seen as some of the most recognizable and common models. And now a bit about the actual models themselves. Rotary Limited's F7 was released in June of 2020 with their own Paragon 3 decoders and all new tooling. This was their second ever run of F7s, with their first being back in 2008 in their Blue Line DC sound decoder era. MTH's F7 was released back in December of 2010 after they stole BLI's tooling for their Blue Line F7s as a settlement in their lawsuit which I will not be getting into. As a result, their F7s showed a bit of age since they are physically identical to the old original Blue Line F7s. Athern has been making F7 models ever since they acquired Globe's tooling all the way back in 1955. This particular model was part of their Genesis line and made back in May of 2010. Alright, now that we know a little history about both the prototype and the model, now we can start with the actual details and seeing what the differences are, you know, visually. Um, so, we'll begin with the front here, and just right off the bat, you could tell they use, each manufacturer uses very different reds and paints um, in general for each model. So, going from right to left here, uh, the Adam Genesis 1, it has, uh, in my opinion, it has, to my eyes, it has the most accurate looking red. I think it's spot on. Uh, it's not too orange, it's not too pink, you know, it's like, it's just right in the middle. It also has a nice, you know, semi, like a um, satin finish, not not too matte, but also not too uh, glossy. And I think that's this one just definitely looks the most accurate. The MTH one, as you can clearly tell, is, has a gloss finish. The red is also a tad bit orange and definitely more saturated than the uh, Atherton one. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the gloss, however, if that's your thing, I think it looks fine. Like, it's it's done well. It's, you know, the, the, the gloss finish is definitely done well. It's just personally not my huge preference. However, the red is... It's a bit, it's a bit, you know, more saturated, which is probably due to the gloss of the gloss coat. But it's also, it's also pretty close to the Atherton one. They match pretty well. And then we have the BLI one here, which actually, now that I see it on camera, it looks very similar to the Atherton one. But this is actually the, in my opinion, the least, um, the 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 least like the Atherton one. This red is very distinctly different. It's actually more faded, and it's more of a rosy red instead of a instead of an orange red. Which is what I believe, you know, uh, what most manufacturers use. In fact, if you use, if you compare it to like a Proto 2000 uh, PA unit here, which I have in this photo, uh, you can see that um, that that or that that red is far more similar to the Atherton one than the BLI one. The BLI one, in my opinion, is actually even though this one, even though the MTH one has the glossy finish, I think the BLI one looks the least accurate. And personally, it really bothers me. But uh, again, it's up to the viewer's preference. You know, like art, it's up to the uh, you know I. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so personally, I don't think the BLI one is accurate. I think the camera might be correct, overcorrecting it, but um, 
to my eyes, the BL Light Red is the least accurate one. But besides that, besides the paint, the paint is applied very well on all three models. There's, you know, very little paint bleed on all three. And uh, the decals are also done very well. Again, the yellow on the BL Light is also a bit faded. Um, it, it's definitely the more faded yellow compared to the other two. Um, this one, yellow is a bit orangey yellow, but the other one looks like the most, the, the most accurate one. Um, yeah, but yeah, as far as the application goes, they all look really good. Uh, one more thing to notice is the other one has the MU hoses, the MTH one does not, and the BLI one doesn't either. Uh, they all do have these curved grab irons on the sides here. The other one is the only one with, um, these actually etched metal, um, foot plates here, which I'll get a close-up of. Uh, hopefully I'll remember to. <laughs> the MTH one also actually has also metal ones, the BLI one is actually just molded in. Um, besides that, yeah, all of them have the, uh, obviously the Mars light and the headlight here. Uh, they all have the grab irons, the yellow grab irons. Uh, the, the Genesis one, which I'm going to base off these, by the way, off of the Genesis one. This one, compared to all the photos, is definitely the most accurate one. So, if it's missing it, it's probably not great. Uh, the Genesis one also has these, uh, eye bolts. I think this is what they use, what the, they use to, uh, mount chains to, so if they could lift the engine up in the shops. Um, Santa Fe had them mounted right next to the nose, so, yeah. So the MT, uh, the, the Genesis and the BLI one both have, the MTH one is missing. Uh, the Genesis one and the BLI one also have this, uh, filler hatch here. I forgot, I didn't do research on this prior, but, uh, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's for, but, um, the Genesis and BLI one have it, the MTH doesn't, and this is accurate to Santa Fe. It's a signature Santa Fe kind of thing. Uh, also, Santa Fe also had these, uh, grab irons on the, uh, fireman side. Uh, BLI one also recreates it fine, however, it is a bit chunkier than the, uh, Genesis ones. Yeah, the Genesis uh, grab brands are by far the most fine. The MTH one is just missing them completely. Uh, on the top here, we have more grab brands here. The MTH ones are missing, and the BLI ones are there. In general, the BLI wire-formed grabs are very thick. I don't know if they use a thicker gauge wire or if the, the, the paint they added on is just very thick. But regardless, they're all very thick compared to the other ones, which are just really fine and really nice. Uh, all three have windshield wipers and flush-mounted windows, as well as window gaskets. Um, and then all of them have the correct uh, five chime horn. All right, now on the side. Um, there's not too much to talk about. I actually did spend a lot of time looking through the, each of these very carefully, and there's only very there's only a few uh, differences between each of the models. Uh, so first off, near the uh, window area, you notice that the MTH one is missing the the front part of the window here, sort of like the BLI model here. You can see it has like a little bit of a, a silver gasket around it. The MTH has no separation between the two windows in the front here, and the, and the other one actually does have ga a, a, a gasket. But however, the uh, mirror, the the, the rear view mirror is blocking so you can't see it. Uh, Atheron is the only one that has the rear view mirror, these two don't have that. Uh, they all however do have the uh, separately applied uh, grab irons uh, on each of the doors as well as the rear here. Um, the fuel tank is another place that's very different. The Atheron and the BLI one each have the uh, de-skirted uh, fuel tanks whereas the MTH one still has the original skirted ones. Now do keep this in mind, these are their, their goal, each of these manufacturers modeled a sort of different time period. Um, the, the Atheron and BLI ones both model a Phase 2 Santa Fe that's, mod that's been modernized. Um, you know, that's hence the uh, de skirted fuel tank. MTH is sort of in a weird in-between point. Uh, the, de the, la the, the fact that the skirt still exists and the uh, Phase 1 uh, dynamic brake fan on the top indicate that it's a Phase 1. And it, and that it's not moder it's not modernized because uh, they they removed the skirts uh, during modernization. However, they did, they do have the uh, five chime horn on top, which is strange because uh, the as built versions had, which this is clearly modeling because of the skirts had uh, just two horns, uh, two single horns. I think they were like Leslie ch horns. Uh, they just had two horns, one facing forward, one facing back. Um, the modernized ones, which you know when they removed the fuel tank, also changed the horn. So MTH is kind of in this like in between point where it has the modernized fuel uh, modernized horn, but also the unmodernized fuel tank skirting. So it is kind of strange. Um, and yeah, so this one's phase one and these two are both phase two. Uh, so that kind of explains the fuel tank. This is not, so my point being is this is not necessarily inaccurate. It's just simply uh, that it, it is different model it's trying to model. Uh, one more thing to note is that the MTH striping here is a bit thick. The uh, red on the MTH striping looks a bit thicker than the other two here. Um, the finish, as far as paint goes, the BLI one definitely loses yet again. Uh, these two both have the really, really nice chrome plating, which is very noticeable. You can see how my hand easily reflects off of both of these. 
well, you can't, yeah, you can sort of see that there. Uh, but you can't, you can see that the uh, chrome plating does not exist whatsoever on the BLI version. You can put your hand over it, and you, you barely see it. You see, you see that, you can see my reflection off the, uh, the grills, but you can't see it at all on the, um, on the paint itself. It's not reflective at all. It is a very, it's very noticeably different when compared, when, when you, you know, when you see it next to these two. On its, on its own, it looks fine, but when you run it together with these two, or one of these two, it's very obviously not chrome plated, and that's kind of unfortunate. But besides that though, uh, everything else looks fine. I mean, all the details are very uh, strong on both sides. One thing you will note actually, one more thing, is that the other one does have a speed, a speedometer, whatever you call it, like it records the speed on the wheels, uh, this wire here. Uh, these two are both missing it, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's move on. On the engineer side of the uh, engines, I'm oh, I'm not gonna bother turning on the two because there's only one significant difference between all three, and that is that Atherton Genesis actually has the uh, re-railer, I believe it is, or the, whatever this extra detail piece here, which uh, the other two didn't even bother recreating, um, and that's it. Literally everything else is identical to the other side. One more thing that I actually forgot to mention is that the MTH uh, portholes on the sides here, they actually spent some extra time and actually made the uh, the plastic, the clear plastic insert. Uh, for the glass, uh, rounded. So it looks like actually like a bulb. I don't know if you guys can tell that. It looks like a bulb shape, which is actually really fascinating. I don't know if this is prototypically accurate, but if you look at like the Atherton one or the BLI one, they're just it's just a flat piece of piece of glass. Whereas the MTH ones look like a like a bowl, like you know like a fish bowl, sort of like that kind of shape, which is really cool. It is flat on the outside, but you know they just molded the glass so it looks like it's a fish bowl. And uh, one last thing is that the Atherton and MTH ones both actually have. Oh God, it went out of focus really bad there. Ather and MTH ones actually both have separately applied uh, 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 door handles, whereas the BLI one is just molded on on the side. Uh, it is it is a really, that, that's a really tiny little nitpick and a really small feature, but I, I think it is again worth mentioning. One thing I did forget to mention actually is the interior. So all three engines actually do have interiors. The Ather one is just all painted like a gray uh, the BLI one is also just painted like a gray, just all one color. The MTH one is the only one that's actually painted, and it's the only one that actually has crew figures inside. So if I uh, put shine a light through it, you could kind of see the guy's arm um, inside there. And uh, you can see how it's, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it is painted like brown and yellow and gray. Like it's the only one that's actually painted inside, which is actually really cool. And then one more thing is that the... Um, Grills on the sides are all etched, and they all look, all three look really good. All right, and on the top of the models, you can see, see yet again very clearly that the MTH one is a Phase One model because it has the smaller dynamic brake fan, whereas the BLI and Atherton ones have the uh, larger dynamic brake fan. Uh, this is the Atherton one. This is the BLI one, by the way. And uh, so yeah, there's a few differences here. There's not too many. Uh, I think the fans are done the best on the Atherton one. They do have the um, they they have the the grill like the, the 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 fan like blade cover uh it's i think it's i believe it's etched and it's black um so it's actually very fine you can actually easily see through the blades uh, whereas these two there are fan blades inside them but, be, but because the um fan blade cover the fan covers are are molded molded plastic so they end up they end up being very thick and they're also painted silver so it's very hard to see as a result inside and you can barely see the fan blades at all so I definitely prefer the other one in that sense. Uh, other one also accurately modeled the uh, little nub um, where the original horn was, and they, uh, you know, when they removed the original two horns and made just one one five time horn, you could, there's a little nub here. The BLI one, MTH ones are both missing. Um, all the the uh, what do you call it? The hooks at the top. I I I I hooks. I bolts. I bolt hooks. Whatever you call them. Uh, the other one does it the best. These are a bit oversized, but they look fine. They they do all exist. Um, and one more thing is that the uh, MTH, it looks to me like the um, the rivets just look oversized. Uh, if you compare it to the Atherton ones, which are just very fine, or even the BLI ones, which I think are actually the finest ones, uh, the MTH ones just look oversized and very thick, which is very strange. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of strange. I don't really know. Probably because of the old tooling. From BLI, you know, from the original BLI Blue Line ones, so that's the reason. You can clearly see it's it's slightly outdated these days, but you know, again, the paint and everything is solid, and um, still overall very fine detail on the top. All right, and on the back here, uh, the very first and most obvious thing you'll note is that BLI and MTH both have these really nice sprung black diaphragms, uh, whereas Atherton doesn't. 
Um, and you know that these are actually identical. <laughs> they actually look identical. Uh, and that's the and yeah, that, that, that's yet another sign that MTH copied or stole you know BLI's original model and basically placed it on their own. So yeah, BLI just decided to keep the original design, so they have they remade really the same thing. Uh, however, the detail goes. The diaphragms on the other one actually look the best. They do actually have the um, the the hook rings on the top here, which you know Santa Fe had. MTH is missing that entirely, and then BLI added it to their diaphragm. Uh, they all have the separate grab bar ends on, on the inside, right here. Kind of hard to see. Uh, the other one looks like... I might have broken that off, but uh, it should be there. <laughs> That's my bad. But anyways, uh, yeah, they all have the doors with the clear plastic glazing in the back. Uh, none of the doors actually open, which is, I mean, expected, honestly. Um, they all have the... Uh, so the, uh, they all have the uncoupling lever. Ather and BLI both have the MU hoses. Uh, BLI painted them black with the uh, white tips, which I actually prefer the look of. However, I believe these are more accurate. They're all being being all silver. Um, MTH is just lacking it entirely. In fact, if you look very closely, you'll actually see holes uh, where the MU hoses should be. But uh, they just didn't install that for some reason. And this and this is not. And th this was from the factory, so it's not like. And they, they, and you know they didn't give MU hoses inside like a separate bag that you can install it yourself. They just simply didn't have it, which is kind of strange. Um, and then the other one has the uh, emergency light in the rear. Uh, this is a feature that was signature to the modernized engines. Uh, they added them later, and uh, BLI's is missing. MTH's, I assume the as-built ones didn't have them, so I, it may, it's understandable why MTH doesn't have that. But besides that, everything else looks pretty much the same. They all have the nice, like, uh, I don't know what you call this, like, uh, detail, whatever you want to call it, on the uh, rear. And uh, yeah, it's all very well done. Um, but, you know, I think, like, yet again, Atherns, I think, knocks it out of the park. Alright, and then one last area we haven't seen is the underframe here. Um, and so, obviously, you're not really going to see the underframe. However, this is yet again to show how Atherin knocks it out of the park as far as detail goes. So, we'll begin the BLI here. Very basic underframe, which is a one-piece mold here. Nothing special. The MTH1 has a speaker grill actually on the bottom, which is pretty cool. So, the sound is actually the loudest in the MTH1. It has a volume knob here, which is really cool, and then you see that it's actually lacking the uh, grill detail on these two boxes entirely. I'm not really sure what these are, but on the other one, if you look closely, I don't know if my camera will pick this up. However, these are actually etched metal grills on the bottom here, which is just completely pointless because you're never going to see this detail, but it's just nice to see that they actually went the way to do it. I went out of their way to do it. Um, but besides that, pretty standard stuff. Interesting how MTH has these silver uh, plastic uh, gearboxes instead of the black ones, which, you know, Ather and, and BLI chose to do. But, um, yeah, not much else to show here. Um, actually, no, there's actually one more thing. Um, and that is the uncoupling, the operating couplers on the MTH engine. This is kind of unscripted, well, unplanned, but um, if, you could, if you guys can see here, MTH actually has these operating uncoupling, uh, un uh, operating couplers. And what I mean by that is, you can press a function button, and the coupler will actually snap open and close, uh, depending on you know how you press it. Um, they're really, really cool. Completely a pointless function. However, MTH loves those gimmicks, you know, so they have to have it. Um, they take up quite a bit of space, and as a result, these couplers actually extend quite a bit more than the normal couplers. I would consider them, you know, extra long uh, couplers, like long shank couplers. And this is actually a downside because what we'll see later is that the coupling spaces between the F A uh, the F A and the F B unit, uh, the A unit and the B unit is actually much wider on the M T H engines than the other two, um, and that is due to these extra long couplers. Now you can replace these with K D couplers. M T H actually provided them out of the box. I bought this thing used. I bought this one new. So they actually came with uh, coupler boxes with K D couplers. So you could actually replace them with uh, K D couplers, uh, which is nice to give you the option, but. It's kind of a shame they spent so much, you know, time in you know R and D research and development uh, making these couplers, which actually make the engine look worse. But uh, that is just something to note. Uh, they're pretty cool and uh, quite complex stuff. Okay, so before we do any actual uh, running, we're going to quickly go through the mechanisms on these engines. So we'll first talk about the weights here. Uh, the BLI one weighs in at 465 grams, or 16.4 ounces. The MTH one comes in at uh, 485 grams, or 17.11 ounces. And the Genesis one comes in at 489 grams, being the heaviest, uh, or 17.25 ounces. Now, these numbers are actually more or less similar, but with these two coming very close and this one being the lightest one. However, I've actually found through experience that the MTH one pulls the most. I'm not 100% sure why. 
Um, but this one dr pulls much more than this one, and this one pulls like nothing. Um, I think the I think it's the reasoning behind the wheels. I think these wheels are polished, like super polished. These these have like a little bit more groove and a little bit you know more tooth and nail inside the nail on on the wheels, on the finish. So this one actually pulls more than this one, uh, believe it or not. Um, although it's it's like a tad you know it's uh like what four grams lighter, so it's really not a big difference. But this one pulls the most. This one pulls the second most, and this one pulls the pulls the third most. That's all you need to know. Um, these all three of these have a can five pole screw on motor, which is pretty much standard standard these days. That that goes to uh, two worm gears, then goes down to each truck, um, you know drivetrain. They're all similar, so they all should perform fine. They should all perform more or less the same. And as you'll see actually in the next segment, they basically perform. They're all satisfactory. There's not much of a huge difference, and I think the differences that are in between each of the engines is just simply due to like you know variations in quality control and batches and whatnot. But uh, yeah, let's get started with that then. All right, uh, now we're gonna do the sound and running portion of this video. So uh, we're gonna be going to add the Genesis ones. These uh, by default by the factory came with Tsunami one, I guess Tsunami, like not Tsunami two, but Tsunami sound decoders. Honestly, I think they sound fine, but I'm no diesel expert, so uh, let's get it started here though. That's the bell. And then as far as the running goes, I'm going to just mute both of these. Uh, there we go. Uh, so these are both powered, by the way, and they both have sound. So uh, this is how they move. Let's start with speed step one. A bit jerky, but it starts to smooth out by speed step two, and then it's three. I mean, they're silent. <laughs> Speed it up a little bit. Yeah, these things are completely silent, and I mean they run fine. Oh, I actually had one derail. That's my bad. <laughs> um, yeah, these things are silent and they're very smooth. And honestly, you'll notice that's true for all three of these engines. They all run really well. Um, let's get the sound back on. Yeah, these sound good. Alright, let's move on to the MTH ones. Alright, now we have the MTH engines here. And uh, we're actually not going to start the sound right now because unfortunately there's no way to, there's no easy way to mute the MTH engines without just shutting them off like right right now. Um, so we're going to have them run, for, uh, run first and then we'll show the sound. But just to quickly note how why this gap is. Now keep in mind, this gap is one KD coupler which are closer and M one MTH coupler which extends a lot more. If you imagine two MTH couplers, this, guy, this, wide would be, this gap would be even longer. Um, which is not the best looking, but uh, just keep that in mind. So we're going to just have this thing run by. We're going to start with speed step one. And it's smooth as butter also. It's very, it's silent, it's smooth. Well, pretty smooth. I'm gonna speed up two, I'm gonna speed, the guy, speed this guy up. A little bit more noisy. But, I mean, still very unnoticeable, especially with the sound. Yeah, also a very good mechanism. Alright, let's start the sound up. Start up as function three. One thing to note that is because MTH makes their own decoders, they actually, for the B unit, they actually intentionally remove the horn and bell sounds functions on this decoder. So this only has prime mover sounds, which, I mean, there's no har there was no harm in giving them horn and bell sounds. You just simply don't use them. But like, it's cool that they thought of it and intentionally removed them, um, which is pretty cool. So, anyways, yeah. So that's how as far as sounds go. The prime mover sound definitely sounds very different. I don't know if it's more accurate or less accurate. I assume it's maybe a little bit less accurate to the 567 EMD motor that they use. I'm not sure, I'm no expert on this, so. Regardless, here's the horn, which keep in mind, this is the only horn you get. You, there's no three horns to choose from, MTH only gives you one. And here's the bell. Honestly, the horn sounds fine and the bell I really, really like, so I'm not complaining if, as far as the sound you know, system goes. And the sound is very pleasing overall. The the motor prime mover sound is much more smoothing and and you know soft. I kind of like that. Anyway, so this also has passenger service announcements, etc. But I'm not gonna worry about those.
Okay, so overall, I think the sound system is also just as nice as the Tsunami ones. Do keep in mind these are Proto Sound decoders, so they're not super compatible with DCC, but I mean, they work fine for me at least, so I'm not complaining. Alright, let's move on to the BLI ones. Alright, now we have the BLI set, and uh, so this is, real quick, this is the only unpowered B unit set I got. Um, the MTH, they sell, I don't know if they sold them in like sets like that, but regardless, this is the one with the B unit is unpowered, so I'm just gonna couple it up like that. There's also no sound, no th nothing inside there. It's completely dead. So let's start up the engine here. It's a very long, long startup sequence. So I don't know if you could tell from the microphone, because I'm using a really crappy stock camera microphone, but the sound is very hollow sounding. I don't know how to describe it properly, but it sounds like the speaker doesn't have an enclosure, and the, the sound files are very poor. But there's something about it that just, just doesn't sound right to me. I'm personally, as you can tell, I'm not a huge fan of this sound. Anyways, uh, here's the horn, which is inaccurate because that's a Leslie one one chime horn thing. This or Nathan, whatever one one chime horn. This is a five chime horn. So they do give you three three horn sounds, but the other ones sound even worse. So there's the bell, and here's the performance. I'm gonna mute this. And we're just going to have it go. There's a weird buzzing sound. I didn't actually realize that before. But besides besides the buzzing sound, which is kind of strange, the uh, well, the engine itself runs fine. Let's do speed step one. Let's see how slow it can go. Yeah, it's a, actually a pretty fast speed step one, which is kind of strange, but yeah, it's a, it's a really weird humming sound. I don't know if something's wrong with this engine, but uh, that's how it came stock. So anyways, uh, here's some of the sounds, I guess. So yeah, uh, sounds okay. Um, again, I, I just don't know something. Maybe it's a speak. Maybe it's a bad speaker. Maybe it's the lack of enclosure. There's something wrong that just makes the sounds feel hollow or some kind. I don't know. It's my least preferred sound system. I it's not terrible. Um, I probably wouldn't replace it if I if I were to keep this engine. But uh, I don't know. It's definitely my least favorite. I think the MTH and other ones are both sound really nice. This one, there's something lacking. Alright, uh, let's take a quick look actually at the lights, the light package of all three of these engines. Alright, here's a interesting uh, aspect of all three of these engines. So, uh, the light package. Um, of the three, I think the BLI one is probably the most overkill, uh, and the other one being the least, but it's interesting. So, let's let's go through each of these, okay? So, Atherin uses uh, bulbs, so unfortunately they're not LEDs, they are bulbs. However, they have a really nice looking solid um, headlight. Uh, they actually do have the two the two bulbs, which is correct, and you know the white background, the you know, the white um, interior, and on the top there's a there's a yellow bulb for a Mars light, and actually there's also an emergency light if you press F6. There's a red light that turns on, which is really cool. And you notice at the top is mounted vertically, at the bottom is mounted horizontally. That is actually the most accurate um, of of all three. Um, this is yeah, it looks really good. Um, other, uh, besides that though, the Number boards don't light up at all, and these marker lights don't light up at all either. So that's the other one. Uh, MTH has 
the number boards and the marker lights both light up. The marker lights are permanently green. The number boards are quite bright. The headlight on mine seems a little lopsided. I don't know if you, guys, you can tell, but the two headlights look, you know, the two light bulbs look kind of slanted. Uh, they are using LEDs, so all, you know, all of these lights are LEDs, which is really nice. Uh, and then the top, there's just a single bulb, it's just a single Mars light, there's no emergency light. And what is kind of bothering me is that the interior of the uh, light itself is actually painted red. Um, you know, like the, 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 yeah, the interior, like the, the back plating. Uh, it's not aluminum, it's not white or silver, it's just red, which is kind of strange. So that's kind of all put off-putting, but it's not a big deal. And on the right side here, we have the BLI model. Uh, the number boards are a really dim but they are they are lit up which I actually really like that's probably the most accurate because number boards shouldn't be this light they shouldn't be very obvious in daylight you know uh, the marker lights are permanently on red the interior lights actually on and it's actually very bright which I think is a bit unrealistic if I were to keep this model I would remove that um, but it is there which is kind of cool it does turn off when the engine is in motion so keep that in mind um, and then as far as the headlights and Mars lights go it, again it's just one ginormous LED. Uh, the headlight is just uh, just one light and then the Mars light is also one. In fact, if I turn it off, I don't know why that thing's still flashing. Well, regardless, basically you just don't see anything. There's there's no, you know, back aluminum plate uh, aluminum plating like the like, you know, the, the 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 housing for the light itself. These two, this one's red, which is wrong. This one is silver, which is right. This one just doesn't, simply doesn't have one. It's just a big light. It's like a, they use like a five millimeter LED or something like that for these two lights. So that is a bit strange. But um, yeah, this one definitely has the most conclusive light package with the dim mar uh, dim number board, which I really like. This one has it's definitely the most lacking as far as the headlight and Mars light goes. But I do like the touch on the marker lights and the uh, number boards. This one has the best looking number boards and Mars light, which I, in my opinion are definitely the most important. Uh, they're definitely the most important ones, um, and the number boards and the uh, marker lights don't light up. Which, I mean, in real life, they didn't really light up either. Uh, the number boards, you can see them at night, but, I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a nice gimmick. I don't think it's necessary, though. And then the, the uh, marker lights are completely useless. They're very uncommon, I'd say. I'd argue pretty uncommon. Um, but they absolutely nailed the, number or the marker lights, the headlight, and then it's the only one with the emergency light, uh, which is right here. And you'll notice that when you turn the emergency light on, all lights turn off, which is really cool. Anyways, that's it for the light package. Alright, and that is pretty much a wrap right there. Um, some final thoughts. So, I don't know the pricing of all three of these engines because they tend to jump around a lot on the market, especially with these two being discontinued and this one basically being out of production. BLI is going to make a Paragon 4 run of these, but the Paragon 3 ones are pretty much gone at this point, at least the Santa Fe ones. So, again, with all three of these basically being discontinued, Pricing really can't be accounted for, but generally I'd say that these probably go for the most. These pro then these two probably go for about the same. I'm not really sure, but regardless, assuming they're the same price, this one I would definitely go for this if I could. These things are super rare these days, so unfortunately I can't find them. Um, at least you know this specific run. Um, so, but this definitely I think has the best detail. It has. A good, I mean, all three of these have really nice mechanisms. Um, this one pulls a ton, it has a good mechanism, it nails the, the lights where it matters, and it's just all around an, a really nice engine. An MTH1, in my opinion, it will be the second best. It's definitely a bit toy-like, especially with a gloss finish, which, again, I'm not a huge fan of. And the protocouplers, which are a bit, I might, I will try to replace the KDs. Um, it also is the only one in the phase one, the as-built kind of scheme, so it's a bit strange. However, I do like, as much as I don't like gimmicks, I think it's a nice one. And then BLI one, I'm sorry, man. It's the one that's underweighted. You know, it's the one that's the lightest one. Um, it has um, the unchrome-plated finish, which I just, uh, that that's a deal-breaker, personally, for me. Because unless if you run it by itself, it's fine. But if you have any other F7s, this one clearly just looks inferior. Or just looks different. Uh, the red is also a bit off. I just don't like that. Um, in fact, actually, you can see right now. Like, yeah, what you see right in camera right now, more or less, is sort of how you see it in person. This one is the faded red. Then these two are both very bright. This one being glossy. Um, but yeah, overall, I'd go for the Atherton one. Um, definitely, for sure. I like the sounds and the passenger announcement features of this one. That's kind of a, like a toy gimmick, but I do like that one. And in my opinion, if you have these two, there's no reason to buy this one. Um, but ultimately, it's up to you guys. If you guys can't find another one, I guess you can find a BLI one. But I still find these two being 
you know, th th this one has its, you have your reasons to buy this one. It's not the most detailed, it's not the best one, but it's, there's, you know, there's nice gimmicks and stuff like that. I think it's fun, you know, it's, it's ultimately fun. I mean, you buy a, you buy a Santa Fe Warbonnet engine because it just looks, it's the coolest looking one. It's like, you know, the Lionel Santa Fe F7, the Warbonnet, it's like the most famous one. It's like a, you know, like, a, sort of like a toy look. Um, this one just has, you know, those features that make it fun, so I really like this one. Um... And so, if you, but if you want a realistic one, you get this one. So there's, for me, there's no reason to get this one if you have all three. And but that's pretty much it. Um, let me guys know what you, your thoughts are down below. Um, you know, do you like the BLI one? I've seen like the um, SEL thirty six. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, SEL. There's uh, one of the YouTubers out there. He he made a review on one of these, and he really liked this. So I mean, I think it's a solid engine. Um, it's pretty. It's really good for the price, but when you have a Genesis one, I personally don't find a reason to get this one. Um, but it's still a solid model, nonetheless. It's definitely the better than like sort of like Bachman or etc. Uh, those engines. So, yep, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.